Hey there, welcome to the Movie Review Mom YouTube channel. If you are brand new and just found me, yay, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> and if you're a returning subscriber, yay, thanks for coming back. So my subscribers already know that my goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so you can decide whether or not you want to spend time or money or both watching a particular film. So today, the movie I'm reviewing is called Paradise is Burning. This dramatic coming of age Swedish film releases in theaters on August 23rd, 2024. The movie is rated R and I'll give you tips for parents here in just a minute. It's an hour and 48 minutes and my overall movie review mom grade hovers around a B to maybe a B plus. So I'm first going to give you an overview in a nutshell and then I'll point out things I liked, then things I didn't like, tips for parents, themes worth talking about, funny lines, interesting lines, and that will finish up with recommendations for other films that are sort of similar that you might also really like. Does that sound good? So let's dive in. In a nutshell, the story is about three sisters who live on their own after their mother abandoned them months prior. They try to keep it a secret while doing everything that they can to survive. The film was directed and written by Mika Gustafsson with writing help from Alexander Orstrand. Already, the film has been nominated for and won several awards at various film festivals. So kudos to the team. So quick tips for parents. I think kids are going to be very bored if they watch this. Uh, unless they're a little bit older, like maybe preteen to teen. However, the content is a little bit rough. So here's some of the scoop on that. There's this one girl, uh, one of the sisters, and she puts her hair on an ironing board and irons it. So if you're if you're watching this with kids, tell them don't ever do that. Don't try this at home. That is really dangerous. The entire movie has subtitles that have to be read, and I know kids are. Just they don't have the patience for that. And some adults don't have the patience for that as well. So what I saw was the English subtitled version. I don't know if they're later going to have an English dubbed version, but I doubt it. The English translation shows profanity and crude language. The three girls steal various items and break into houses. For a split second, we see a topless girl at a public swimming pool. The oldest daughter has a ton of tattoos all over her arms. A teenage girl shows her pregnant body, her stomach, basically. Teenagers smoke cigarettes and marijuana and drink lots of alcohol to celebrate different things, such as when one of the girls starts her period or the youngest girl loses a tooth. And I thought, is that a Swedish thing? Or are they just using any excuse to get drunk and, you know? all of that. Um, as I mentioned, one of the young girls starts her period for the first time. Another girl has the, uh, the oldest daughter has a tongue piercing. There's profanity in Swedish, including F-bombs. Older teenage girls teach younger girls how to swear and flip the bird. And I guess that's supposed to be so funny. And of course, the mother in me this whole time is just cringing. And we see an emerging lesbian kiss with an older woman and the, one of the younger girls. Some of the themes that are illustrated very well are adolescence, sisterhood, illustrations of different kinds of family, life in Sweden. And I don't know how accurate this is, if Swedish life is really like this, uh, secret lives and responsibility. We see both good and bad examples of how people react to the the burden of responsibility. So here's the list of things that I really liked about this film. First of all, the three young sisters were played extremely well by Biana Del Bravo, Safira Mossberg, and Dilvin Assad. The rest of the cast gave excellent nuanced performances and included Ida Engvall, Marta Oldenburg, and Mitya Siren. Now these are all Swedish names, I think. Uh, and so I hope Hopefully I'm pronouncing them correctly. We get to spend time in Sweden where the movie takes place. Now, this is a very different kind of Sweden than what most Americans imagine, certainly what I imagined. When I went to Sweden a few years ago, I went to all of the typical touristy places, which looked super charming and beautiful, typical of how I still picture Sweden. And so this Sweden that's portrayed on the film 
makes you not want to go to Sweden. So fair warning. We get to enjoy the carefree nature of childhood, especially in the summertime. We also get to watch each of the girls experience an awakening and a coming of age journey. And they're different ages, so they're experiencing different things in their lives. Now, onto the list of things that I didn't like or thought could have been done differently or better. For example, a lot of viewers will be very bored waiting for something to happen. You'll enjoy this film much more if you are prepared for a more artsy look at growing up without adult supervision. It, it doesn't have action sequences or anything like that, even necessarily a big, huge plot. It is simply watching these young girls go through their day-to-day -day lives. And there is a big, powerful moment at the end that helps you appreciate all of the things that happened before. We never see the mother and don't fully understand why she disappeared, illustrating another way that people respond to responsibility and adulting. I was worried about the girls the entire time and got exhausted watching them implode right before my eyes. It's a very depressing film in that regard. And I kept looking at the clock to see when was this misery going to end? When was the mother going to come and rescue the girls and that kind of thing? Not, not to be a big spoiler, but these orphaned girls almost become feral with no mother to help them or show them how to behave properly. It's like Lord of the Flies, but with three girls, three Swedish girls. <laughs> There's a lot of fighting, both physically and verbally. And, you know, as a young girl growing up, uh, I, I mean, I had four boys, and so there's lots of fifty cuffs and wrestling around, mostly playing, you know. But with girls, I was like, wow, these girls are rough. The only teenage girls who are friends of the three sisters appear to be practically wild animals. And the whole time I'm thinking, where are their parents in all of this? It would have been interesting to contrast the three sisters with regular girls to see their interactions. I mean, I recognize this is a certain economic, uh, low economic neighborhood, um, I'm assuming, because that's where the mother was living. And, you know, these are not elegant, beautiful homes or anything like that. Uh, so we just see all of these wild girls running around, the three girls, and then their friends who appear to be doing the same thing. I'm assuming that they had parents. So parents, do you know where your kids are right now? Do you know their friends very well? If not, you should, because your kids' friends have a huge influence on them while they're growing up. Now, the film makes a big, bold statement about parenting, and especially the importance of a mother when raising daughters. Of course, they didn't have a father around either, for, for that matter. So whenever I watch movies, I take notes and I write down funny lines and interesting lines simply so I can share with you, and get a taste of the dialogue and script writing quality. I looked at my notes afterwards to see what funny lines I had written down and I didn't write down any. It's really a serious drama. The kids do goofy things, but not in a good way. Um, but for interesting lines, I wrote down this one. Um, and you can, by the way, see all of my written reviews on my written website, moviereviewmom.com. So this is a character whose name is Zara, and she's played by Marta Oldenburg. And so she says, congrats on becoming a woman, or condolences, I guess. So this is the older woman that lives next door. And whenever these young girls need something, they run next door to get support. And so one girl starts her period and has no idea what to do. So she runs to Zara, you know, and so that was Zara's reaction. Now, whenever I watch movies, I instantly think of other movies that are sort of similar. And so here are two that I listed. And these are movies that are sort of similar, but they're basically about kids without parents. And so the first one is called Camp Nowhere. This was clear back in 1994. And it shows a bunch of kids running amok in a summer camp with basically no adult supervision. They pay some guy you know, and, and they're really not getting much supervision or care. And that could be fun and liberating if you're a kid, but it can be frightening if you're a parent, you know. And then the next movie is called Unaccompanied Minors. Now, this came out in 2006 and, again, is uh, some kids that have no adult su supervision and they're running amok and, you know, that kind of thing. So 
while the this movie is about these unaccompanied sisters, the oldest daughter is trying to take care of them. And the social services office keeps calling to set up an appointment. And the oldest daughter is like, oh, I'm trying to fake it because there is no mother. And she knows that if they get caught, they're all going to be separated and go into the foster care system. And so she's trying really hard, but she's so... Um, not skilled at that because she's just a, a child herself. She's just a teenager. All right. I hope that if you watch this movie that you enjoy it. If my reviews are helpful, give them a thumbs up, subscribe, comment down below. You know the drill. And those videos that I just recommended have links in the description below. They'll take you off to Amazon as affiliate links. And so uh, if you rent or buy something that sends some pretty little pennies my way and helps support the channel. So thank you so much for your support. Have a fantastic day. And when you get a minute, visit me on social media and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.